Today, we're taking a look at the RDBI VH-121 Vulture. You've seen this in Space Engineers, Conley Lost, and many other of my videos before. So now it's finally available on the Steam Workshop. Yes, hello everyone, I'm Captain Jack, and welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year if it's the first video of mine you're seeing in 2021. Yes, we're in a brand new year right now, and I thought I'd start it off by uploading one of my iconic creations to the Steam Workshop, so you can start the year off by playing with it, blowing it up, flying it around, crashing it, you know, doing whatever you want inside of Space Engineers. Well, today we're going to take a quick look at it, I'm going to tell you about the vehicle, and then you can go download it from the Steam Workshop, play around with it, and uh, yeah, tell me what you get up to do with it. So, let's take a look. Now obviously the Vulture was first inspired by Mr. Venom's RCSP Raven. The Raven's been on the workshop since around about 2015, so it's also about 6 years old now. It's just over 5 years, between 5 and 6 years old. It was updated in 2016, I remember reviewing it all the way back then, that does make me sound old now. The Venom originally made the Raven, which is what the Vulture is based off of. Now I'd say the Raven itself, although Venom says it's inspired by his early childhood Lego creations, I'd say it very much draws from the Falcon from Halo Reach. You can definitely see some similarities to that, and I would compare it to that in a way. And I kind of like to think of it as a spiritual successor to the Falcon in sort of like a modern SE style. If he was going to make the Falcon in SE using SE's own blocks, etc., this is how you would make it, etc. Now, see, I'm using a modded version of this, the original Raven, which I will link in the Steam description as well to what inspired this. You know, it uh, didn't use mods, it's completely vanilla, no DLCs back then. I think we didn't have SE DLCs back in 2015. So this one does use a couple of the DLCs, I believe, and also some mods which are linked, including the rotor blades, which many of you have asked for. Um, I can link them in the workshop page now. You can download them and enjoy them. So we're going to take a look at this today. I've overhauled the interior, the blades, etc, and changed around a bit of a design to suit kind of what I've got going on here. This is a little bit different to what you saw in Connie Lost. This is a more updated version and workshop friendly edition. When it comes to filming cinematics and RP series, we tend to use about 50 different versions of one vehicle for so many different scenes or episodes, etc. So you're never going to get the exact same one because it isn't the exact same one in a way because we like, modify it 101 times. But anywho, let's take a look. So hopping into spectator mode, we're going to start over here. Now as you can see, we've got three different type of blades. Well, not technically three different, two different type of blades. We've got a small one back here, which sort of acts as like the thin blade. And then we've got our big ones up here, which sort of do intersect each other, but uh, that's just the case of it in a way. But it does fit there really nicely. Now, one thing the Raven allowed is, is having the actual atmospheric engines here, then having these on top, they fit here and work perfectly ever so much. I really like it. And of course, you could take away the engines themselves and actually have, you know, just the blades. However, I kind of like having the engines here as well. It does add a bit more to it. So yes, you could like, you know, still keep the blades there remove the engines, it's really up to you. Maybe I'll make a more like stripped back version at some point, or like a different variant of it, but for a minute, I kind of like it. Now, what's changed from the Connie Lost version? Well, I've moved the spotlights back into the forward hull here. Originally, it was off to the sides, sort of like how the original LAAT spotlights would happen, like during the Battle of Mbara. Well, here I moved them back in here, as I think they fit the general profile a lot better inside the actual hull. I've kept the Gatling gun up front. I was going to remove this or swap it out with an azimuth gun, but I've kept it rather basic as the ship doesn't really use that whatsoever. However, the missile pods are back and slightly moved around a bit. So we've got four missile pods on each side, meaning eight missiles in total. This thing can definitely do a lot of damage if you're going on assault mode with it. Now I added these little ground down windows back here, just for adding a bit of design detail in a way, if that's what you can call it. And I kind of think it looks really nice. I like it, you know, it just adds to it a bit of style, makes it stand out a bit, so yeah. Now one thing I have skimmed down is the thrusters on the side have been skimmed down quite a bit. So instead of about, I think it was, hmm, I think it was five thrusters we had on the side, we've now only got three. And the reason for that is, well, we can use the jets on the bottom here and on the top for the blaze to go side to side, etc. So we don't need that side thrust all the time. It's just something to add into extra there. Backwards thrusters have been kept exactly the same, not changed any of them. I have added indents to the sides here to add sort of like, again, to that design detail sort of phase here. And we are using mix of carbon sort of like matte or carbon fiber, that's, that's the word we use for that, carbon fiber armor skins or smooth armor skins. This is because at the minute, SE seems to be having a bit of a paint issue, where if I paint this block black, uh, it turns into like some sort of dark gray, which doesn't look too good overall. Now I've kept the medium cargo containers here simply because I wanted the ship to have some cargo space. You think this thing is going to be doing recon missions, maybe resupplying an outpost, or dropping off and ferrying supplies in between bases, it's going to want to carry some things around here, so that's why this is still here. I've also still kept the nuclear reactor, as while this thing has got batteries on board, you are going to want to stock up on some reactor power occasionally, just so you've got some extra stuff to work with. 
Now, taking a look at the interior here, I have overhauled the inside of the actual Vulture to make it look a bit more sort of law and RP friendly. This is how RDI would have it when they're using it, and hopefully I'm going to get to use it in some videos and cinematics coming very soon later this year. We'll have to see. Starting out, we've got some car containers behind some sort of like metting here or stuff like that. I said netting, but said metting. Oh, well, you get the point. Sort of like that army thing where you chuck car containers behind like some netting, etc. and camouflage and go for that. So again, using the ground down windows here, sort of create this detail and you've got the car containers here. You can store like rifles or maybe some like ammo containers in there. You can store a variety of stuff, maybe some med kits and stuff like that. I don't know, but choice is yours. You can do what you want. I'm also using the ground down LCD blocks here on the sides, just again to add a bit of detail to it. It kind of brings out that sort of more featured side there. That could be like a handle, you know, you could use to like hoist yourself into the vehicle, etc. It's not really practical, but it does add a little bit of detail to it, and I really like it. We've got the same passenger seats here, so we can have about three passengers in here. We've also got the two gunner seats back here as well. Not only do these work for gunner seats for each turret, you can also hop in there to carry an extra person on board. Now we're using three batteries in total, so this thing can stay powered on that flight for quite a while, so you can charge it up, so we still do have the connector down here in the floor. It was here, where's it gone? Uh, the connector was here. Oh, there it is, I literally walked past it, yeah, there we go. So the connector's down here, uh, so you can repower and recharge via that, or you can quickly shove some uranium in the reactors for a quick boost to recharge your batteries, etc. That's the best way of doing it. Now the cabin lights does have these orange lights as well, just to bring out a bit more sort of looks and features to it, but I'm happy with that. And that's most of the interior of the vehicle. Now I'm going to jump in the cockpit right now, so there we go. And we're going to have a test fly around and see how well the Vulture actually does, etc. So, let's hop in our cockpit. Now, we're going to want to turn on our, or take off our landing gears. So this thing can fly its normal thrust like this, you don't have to activate the blades. However, for stylish and RP effects, I would recommend activating the blades. There we go, they spin, etc. Now, I was thinking of adding a script to make it so it would like tilt forward, so you can fly it like that, etc. However, for now, I think it just works so you can control it wherever. The reason we still have the jets on there, etc., or like the hover thrusters or atmospheric engines, is because when we're using this in RP setting, it kind of helps to have those just to give us maximum uh, maneuverability. Now, in terms of the handling, the Vulture handles super well. You can fly around here, and hopefully I don't crash it in the next five minutes, but you can fly around and do some really good precision movements. Having the blades really helps making sharp turns when you are flying around. So if you are want to do some sort of Black Ops mission or take this down to a planet for some sort of like quick approach, this is going to be the vehicle of choice for you because you really can make some sharp maneuvers around here. Although I'm just flying through trees right now, you can see how well I can actually get between each tree. He says crashing straight into it. Um, yep, yeah, that's... You were going to ignore that fact, but the fact that I crash into that. <laughs> you still got my point, though. You can make it around each tree and basically make these quick maneuvers here. Obviously, Jack should probably pay more attention while he's narrating a video and trying to fly the ship at the same time. But overall, it does handle really well. Having the actual, the actual blades does add to the maneuverability because the blades do act as a thruster on their own right, essentially. So it's quite a good mod. I would recommend checking out the mod and downloading it. So yes, this is the VH-121 Vulture. It's now available via the Steam Workshop. You can go ahead and download it. Don't worry, you'll be downloading a version I've not just broken. Uh, so yeah, good, good luck for that one. But yeah, I'm really impressed with this. I'm glad it's now out on the Steam Workshop and you are going to get it in your hands as I'm really enjoying the Vulture. It's one of those like aircraft I love using because we use atmospheric engines quite a lot in Space Engineers. But we don't always use the bladed aircraft in a way or like the things with like jets on us. It's quite nice to use this for a change. So yeah, hopefully you're going to enjoy it. Do let me know what you think of it down below in the video comment section as per usual. Don't forget, if you are viewing this on the Workshop, please make sure to give a favorite and also a thumbs up as well. You can also give it a Steam Award if you feel it's worth that one. But do let me know what you think. Hopefully you're going to see this in some more series coming very soon, as uh, I would quite like that. I might include it in my Space Engineer Survival series, which is airing right now on the channel. If you've not tuned in to watch that, it is every Friday and Sunday, apart from this week, but you can tune in and watch that. I might build it in there. That could be a good idea, actually. Well, everyone, I'm going to leave you here. This has been my review of the VH-121 Vulture from Web Red Industries. You can check it out on the Steam Workshop via the link down below in the video description. Don't forget, if you are new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button to never miss a video from myself here on the Captain Jack channel. For now, obviously I have been Jack, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.